Hey, what's up? My name is Neville Solomon. I'm the senior pastor at Silver Worldwide Ministries. Today, I want to share with you seven checkpoints of examining yourself. Seven checkpoints of examining yourself. I think it's very important that we examine ourselves on a perpetual basis um, to ensure that we are walking in the will of God. A lot of times as we're living day to day, we get caught into routines that are um, sometimes unhelpful or unhealthy for us, um, both mentally and spiritually. So here are seven checkpoints that we can take in our life to ensure that we are on the correct pathway of being all that God wants us to be. Before I talk about these checkpoints, obviously we're saved by grace, we're saved by the love of Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, if we do not accept the love of Jesus Christ and allow the love of Jesus Christ to operate and function in our lives, we're not going to be living much of a Christian life. So here are seven ways to ensure that you are living your life to the fullest and you are living most like you can for Christ. Um, checkpoint number one is prayer. If you read the scriptures, you'll see that Jesus Christ was continuously praying all the time. Obviously, he was sinless. Obviously, um, he was the son of God. And obviously, um, he had power over sin. But yet, he still counted it important to pray to God all the time. This is a message to us that no matter what, how powerful we are or how weak we are, the expectation is that we would always be praying to Jesus. Always be praying without ceasing, trusting that God is able to work in our lives. So it's important that we pray. If you examine yourself and you find that you're not praying, then you will understand that um, it's very it's vitally important that you um, up the time that you pray, but also you up the emotion and, and the spirit that you pray in. We should be praying from a spirit of faith and not from a spirit of fear. Uh, number two is Bible study. It's very important that we study the Bible, not just to understand the facts of the Bible, but to actually be able to apply the Word of God to our lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of the problems that we have in life is not so much that God's not answering our prayer, but we're not applying the Scripture to our life. The Scriptures have requirements for us. And um, the scriptures will teach us actually how to live for God. So if we examine our knowledge of the word and we found that we're lacking in our knowledge, James said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and God will give it to you liberally. So we should be always um, praying, of course, but we should also always be studying the word of God so that we can grow. Um, thirdly, we should be in a spirit of worship. We should always be worshiping God. We should examine ourselves and ask ourselves, is our worship authentic? Do we really, really serve God from, from a spirit of adoration and a spirit of love? I think by examining ourselves in this area, we can, we, we can encourage ourselves to get excited to live in a spirit of jubilee as it relates to worshiping God. Fourthly, our gifts and our talents. Are we, use, are we utilizing our gifts and our talents in the proper function? Are we utilizing them at all? Do we even know what our gift is? If you have a particular aptitude to help people, whether it's to help them physically, whether it's to help them through words, um, through prophecies, whether it's to help them through teaching of the word, whether it's to help them um, mentally, to help them to um, apply the wisdom of the word to their life. However, God has gifted you to help people, whether it's to cook, whether it's to spend time with people, whether it's to pray for people, however God has gifted you uniquely, you need to use that gift to be able to help people. Um, fifthly, I think that you need to be a part of a local church and you need to utilize your gift in your local church to help your church grow. Um, what are you doing in your local church to cause your church to be blessed by your particular gift. I know that many of our gifts may be specific to um, doing things outside of the church, but we should also try to do something in our church as well. Sometimes what we do in our church is just to help out. Um, it's a practical thing that we do. You may not be gifted to um, you know, um, clean up the church, for example, but you just do it out of the heart of, of just service and love towards your church and towards God and towards those that you attempt to serve in your community. Um, Sixthly, I think it's very important that we that we come to um, an understanding that God has called us to evangelize our community. Uh, that's the mean, that means that we are supposed to be sharing the gospel. As you become a Christian longer and longer, um, and you share the gospel with all the people that you know, it gets to a point that there's nobody that you don't know that you haven't shared the gospel with. But yet, in the midst of that, you're still commanded to share the gospel. So how do you do this? You do this by meeting... Um, a group of people that Jesus met oftentimes called strangers. We have to share the gospel with people that we do not know so that everybody can hear the word of God. Uh, ultimately, you know, many times we want to share it with people that we form some kind of relationship with, but even many people that you have absolutely no relationship with, but you can at least show the love of God to them 
in a practical way would be helpful because for everyone to hear the gospel it can only be heard if strangers share it with strangers ultimately at the, to, to some extent and lastly um, I think that it's very important that we have a spirit of joy number seven we have to have a spirit of joy joy is our alarm bell of self-examination if I find that I'm doing from one to six and I don't feel happy I should re-examine my life to see where is my life falling short why there's no joy in my life a lot of times we ignore our emotions but I believe that God gives us our emotions as an alarm to sound off to us that something's not right in our life or something is right in our life um, in the instance that you don't have joy you have to understand the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength so if you're going to be doing great things for God you can't do great things for God unless you have a spirit of joy so I encourage you to walk in in happiness to walk in joy but ultimately by examining every aspect of your life by examining your prayer by examining your Bible study by examining your worship by examining um, what you do in your local church by examining your gifting by examining how you evangelize um, by doing all those things and doing them well to the best of your ability or to the best of the ability of God in you you'll have joy. So I just wanted to just share these with you so that you could examine yourself as I'm examining myself um, on a periodical basis to see that I'm growing in God and ultimately that I'm becoming like Jesus. Because if we're gonna reach the world, we're not gonna reach the world just by sharing the gospel, we're gonna reach the world by becoming like Jesus and people seeing the gospel in us. I want to share this particular broadcast with you because we just had communion service. And the part of our communion service was to focus on the fact that we need to examine ourselves. So I just wanted to encourage everyone out there um, in the online world to examine yourself for Jesus Christ and to continually grow and know that God loves you and God wants us to become a vehicle of love to everyone else. Thank you.